Hi, this is Shadeep. Today we're going to be looking at battlefield reenactments and take a look at people in full armor working with weapons and at the same time grappling at close range. So are these grappling techniques that we're going to see are 100% accurate? I cannot say for sure, uh, but at the same time, they really demonstrate just at close range how things can be and when it's at high speed and a lot of pressure and with weapons involved you can see the choice of takedowns and we're gonna compare it to what today's takedown options are at the highest level at the same time so the first one here where two people lose their weapons they clinch go for all sotogari and then from there you just stab you put yourself in a controlling position and from there you end the soldier's life so you can move on with the battle so O Sotogari or a major outer reap. It allows you to put yourself in a very advantageous position uh, in contrast to something like a double leg takedown where you are between their feet and also when you are clinching you have uh, control over their upper body and their arms so the likelihood of them pulling out a small weapon and using it against you is slim compared to when you go for their legs. So O Sotogari here you see it um, done with the jacket but at the same time it can be done from various grips the jacket is not going to be there every time you can just do it by hugging someone tight and from there you do it you can here just grab the arm and pass your arm around and then do it by creating a lever by pushing with your hand back and your leg at the same time you can do it with the belt there's so many options it's a very versatile take down to have in your arsenal as a judoka or any type of fighter so here you can see also spear is a very good weapon because it allows you to hit the target from such a great distance now here you see even though he got the takedown he was the one killed just as i mentioned earlier so he had the knife already and he was trying to stab he took him down with ko sotogake and since he had that knife and the armor is protective so when you do get taken down it's not like someone that gets taken down on the streets wearing just a t-shirt or a lot of people just wearing a tank top so you hook the leg from the outside and then from the clinch or grabbing their armor or their clothing you take them down you can go down with them again this is the type of throw that gets you in an advantageous position on the ground but yet you can still get killed on the battlefield as we just saw so these takedowns are very uh, spontaneous you don't have to be an expert in judo or grappling to know that these work little kids trip each other here you see he was trying to get an inner reap or inner hook or uchi gari called in judo you can see it also in chinese wrestling you can see it in mongolian wrestling um, but it is a very important technique in the judo arsenal uh, so i wouldn't be surprised if it happened back uh, in the days of the battlefield now keep in mind that the battlefield days in japan ended uh, with the ushering of the tokugawa era so in the early 1600s because at that time there was inner peace and from there all jujitsu school was for self-defense and going up against gangs and of course just competition between schools so getting ready and constantly training was a thing sparring and of course you had the tradition of dojo storming dojo yaburi so constantly training and crafting your grappling was very important so inner hook and outer hook or outer reap is a staple in grappling so now we continue here you see this is uh, Uki Otoshi gets on top and grabs a tanto or a knife and finishes off his opponent. So from this clinch, Uki Otoshi is very easy. Uki Otoshi means floating drop. So it's the first technique you do in Nage no Kata. It's seen very rarely in randori or in competition because it is very difficult to pull off from the judo grips now in judo the clinching there are rules around it to limit it because you just want to keep a 
judo expression i would say that's a lot of what these rules are for is to keep a an ongoing game a very explosive dynamic game but also with judo expression so here you see uh, it can be done from the sleeve and it can be done by pulling the lapel you can also uh, do it as someone has one of their legs lifted as you will see in a second by this footage of the Kodokan. So as they are going for a, an outer reap, you actually surprise them with this as a counter because they have one leg that's lifted. So they're on one leg standing, which makes the throw much easier to hurl them forward. So let's take a look at a few competition examples. Now here is Inoue Kose uh, in the All Japan as he is going for Ochigari or Uchimata, he lifts his leg, so thus be, he becomes on one leg, and from there he uses his hands like a steering wheel and gets him forward. Now, you can argue it's an Uchimata Skashi based on what he was trying to do, but the mechanics are very similar. He's going forward, he is on one leg, and he finishes the technique with his hands, but it can be argued that it's an Uchimata Skashi as well as Uki Otoshi, depending on what the opponent was trying to do. So it's a great example of this technique and at the same time the greatness of Inoue. Another one here is um, in Mongolian wrestling, it's also a very, it's a staple of Mongolian wrestling. So they hook the leg from the outside to get you to react to remove it. And from there, they finish the technique with their hands. Now. I don't know if you noticed, but these techniques that we saw on the battlefield when there's weapons involved and armors and such, you see that these are the staple takedowns of today's MMA, like Ko Sotogake, and here the famous example by Hoist in the UFC. Let's see it again, rotates it from the outside, and also you have the inner hook at the same time. So these staples that were very much practical i would say back in the centuries ago they are still very much a staple today when it comes to you know high intensity fighting there is striking involved um, there is just so many things that's going on it's not just jacket grappling these techniques are still the staples now you, oh, there's also in mma you have the wrestling takedowns the double leg and the single leg which are part of the judo curriculum as a whole so um, but still these techniques you can still see them the basics the fundamentals they're not only effective but they're also used in deadly combat and for a reason so i can't say for sure that these uh, actors are judo experts or any type of grappling expert but uh, in these environments where there's just so much going on these types of takedowns are a staple until this very day in the octagon in MMA. So if you have anything to add, please let me know down below. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.